Today we're going to talk about adaptations that occurred because suction feeding sucks on land. Well, hi there. I am not known for a lack of enthusiasm about the things that I talk to you about. And that is largely because I talk to you about the coolest things ever. And today I am probably more excited than usual about what I have to talk to you about. This world is full of amazing creatures that display incredible adaptations. But what is an adaptation? An adaptation is a change to an organism that results in an increase in its reproductive fitness. And a lot of people don't understand what fitness is all about, or they think about it as like makes them bigger and stronger. But the truth is, not every group of organisms on the planet is getting bigger and stronger because bigger and stronger doesn't always increase your fitness. What does increase your fitness is if you are passing on your genes, generally through reproduction, a heck of a lot to the next generation. It is how much your genes are represented in future generations. So one way to measure it would be like, how many offspring did you produce during your lifetime that say survived to have their own offspring? That would be a great way to measure fitness. And so these are changes to organisms that result in them producing more offspring that make it to adulthood. Pretty cool, right? So how does this happen? I mean, it's great to say, yeah, well, I guess that could happen, but how does it happen? And, and the truth is, it's going to begin with a mutation, because mutations are how organisms become different in a way that is heritable, or that they pass on to future generations. And so, mutations often result in organisms that, well, that are different. And different can result in better fitness or worse fitness or make no difference at all, right? But when one of these mutations causes an organism to be slightly more successful in its environment and produce more copies of its genes in the next generation, what that means is that that mutated gene also gets passed on more to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation, it becomes more and more common over time. And we intend to make this a series, so let us know if you want to hear about more awesome adaptations even than the ones we're talking about today. And if you have any suggestions, please suggest some because we are really excited about this new series. Today we're going to talk about adaptations that occurred because suction feeding sucks on land. Fish live in the water. I bet you didn't know that. And many fish eat other fish and other things that swim around in the water. And if you've ever played the game Bobbing for Fish, you've discovered that it is relatively difficult to catch fish with your face. There are really two main ways that creatures catch fish with their faces. One of those ways is that they have long skinny jaws and lots of sharp pointy teeth and they kind of whip their head off to the side and grab fish. And this works pretty well. You see this on well, all kinds of creatures like gar fish, uh, swordfish do something a lot like this, uh, crocodiles, especially like the gharial, which is a fish eating specialist, dolphins. There's a lot of these animals with these long skinny jaws that whip them off to the side in order to grab fish. And that works pretty darn well. But that isn't the strategy that most fish use. Most fish employ suction feeding. And, and how this works, you'll see this on, on uh, well, almost all fish, fish like bass that you've maybe seen before. Uh, some really great examples are things like the slingjawed wrasse, which is an awesome fish. Um, also, fish like the goblin shark, or like this lungfish, which is stinking rad. Also things like mud skippers, all sorts of fish use this suction feeding. And what's going on is their jaws are generally pretty small. And then when it comes time to catch some prey as it swims by, they suddenly expand their jaws tremendously, which makes a great big space where there was no space before. 
This creates negative pressure, a vacuum, because when you have a giant space full of nothingness, it pulls stuff in and it sucks in water and fish. And it works spectacularly well. However, many fish like the lungfish and mud skippers can also exist on land, right? They can go up on land. Some, some of these fish, like this lungfish, they can live on land for years at a time. But there is something they can't do on land, and that is feed. Because suction feeding sucks on land. Give this a try. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, put a piece of cake on the table, go up next to it, and just go. You will probably never suck that cake into your mouth. It just doesn't work on land. Well, if you're going, what you are doing is you're doing suction feeding with your lungs, which I do not advise. All right, and it still sucks on land. You might get some tiny little cake particles, which will irritate your lungs tremendously, but you won't be able to suck that big piece of cake in there. It just doesn't work. Air isn't viscous enough to suck stuff in in the same way that water will. It's the worst. But there was an adaptation that allowed some animals to feed on land. And that is an adaptation that we still see today in animals like frogs. And that is a crazy tongue. Suction feeding sucks on land, and as a result, you can no longer get prey to suddenly come to your face. And so, if you're going to get your face to prey, now you need to actually bring at least a part of your face to the prey, since the prey won't come to the face. And that is what the tongue does. And with frogs, you'll notice that the tongue is attached at the very front of their mouth, and they basically just flip it out, and stuff sticks to it, and then they bring it back in. Victory. They can feed on land. You don't see a cooler example of this anywhere than what you see with chameleons. Chameleons have the craziest darn tongue in the whole world. It can be longer than their entire body, and it's supported by this cartilaginous rod. This chameleon tongue is essentially just blasted out of the mouth at extreme distances, and that then is recoiled into the mouth, gobble them up. It's incredible. And you'll notice when the chameleons are feeding that their eyes, this is separate from their rockin' tongue, but their eyes are moving independently, looking all over the place, and then when it comes time to nail something with that tongue, they'll bring both eyes together. That gives them binocular vision, which allows them to judge depth. That's why you can't judge depth very well when you have one eye closed. But when you have two eyes focused on the same thing, you can actually see how far away it is. And you need this when you're shooting out your rockin' ninja tongue at stuff. Chameleons are awesome. And that tongue was probably the first way that land fish were able to actually feed on land because suction feeding sucks so much. But there is another adaptation which has allowed organisms to get their face to food since food won't come to their face anymore, and that is the neck. It's kind of a crazy thing. You, you might not think about this very often, but if you look at fish, fish don't really have necks. When they go around, if they're going to move their face to something, they pretty much have to point their entire body at it all the time. Which means if you're going to get your face to something, you've got to be able to move your body all the way over to it faster than it can move away from where it is. And that basically doesn't work ever, right? This is why no fish really uh, hunt by just coming up to something and biting it. They either suck it in or they grab it from the side because they can't move their whole body forward faster than little prey fish can get away. Well, it doesn't work any better on land unless you can suddenly swivel your head in all kinds of crazy directions like you see with these monitor lizards and this incredible bearded dragon. Watch him! Watch that neck! He would not be able to just spin around and grab that prey nearly as fast if he didn't have that neck. And you notice he's also incorporating the use of a little tongue that he shoots out, not as far as the chameleon, but he's got the tongue thing going and he's got the neck, which allows him to point that tongue in crazy directions without moving his whole body. The neck is stinking rad. If there's one thing that rivals the neck for awesomeness, 
It is our patrons at Patreon. I just want to take a moment to say thank you guys so much for all that you do for this channel. And now let's talk about more awesome adaptations. This last adaptation is one of my favorite things in the whole darn world. That's why I wanted to make this video very first of all of our awesome adaptations videos. And that is the feeding style of the Mata Mata Turtle. You've maybe heard me talk about this before, but it is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And I wanted to show it to you in fast motion, in slow motion, in every sort of motion, because it makes me almost as happy as Mata Matas look all the time. Mata Matas are turtles, and, and turtles actually first appeared on land. Uh, and being land creatures, uh, turtles have got awesome necks. Uh, you know, and they, they are not very good at shooting a tongue out, so really the way that they get food to their face is that they move their face to food all the way using that stinking rad long neck of theirs. And, and they can move in all kinds of directions. And the Mata Mata has got a very impressive neck, but the ancestors of Mata Matas actually returned to the water and began again to hunt fish. And there are really only two styles of fish hunting that work really well, other than ambush, right? If you can lure them into your mouth like an alligator snapping turtle or an angler fish or something, that works pretty well too. But the Mata Mata uses suction feeding to hunt, um, which is not all that unusual, except for the structure that it uses to do suction feeding, which is what makes me almost as happy as the Mata Mata looks and that is their neck. You notice it's not their mouth that they suddenly make very large, it is their neck that they rapidly expand. Their neck, which exists because suction feeding didn't work anymore on land, is now being used to do suction feeding. That doesn't make you happy. You probably need a Mata Mata turtle in your life because I don't know how you could stare at that all day and and not be happy. It's, it is the greatest thing ever, pretty much. I mean, how, ah. if you know of something cooler, I wanna hear about it down in the comments. It just makes me happy. And I'm, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to share this stinking rad group of awesome adaptations with you guys today. If you wanna see more of these, please let me know. Please like this video if you liked what you saw here. As always, subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Giddy up. Uh, could you maybe, on this next take, we're gonna have to do it again, uh, bring more energy, Clint? Yeah. That'd be great. That's <laughs> <laughs> come out of that chair. Lens. <laughs> Clint, or Will falling upstairs. <laughs> and then us all laughing at his pain. <laughs> Are you okay? I know. Uh, we heard. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. How's your pride? Uh, okay, cool. Let's kill it. All right. Good job. I am excited about that video. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? Yes.